I am Alexis. And hi, I'm Kaya. And you're tuning into The Little Bronzer Show! Ah, just you and me. Welcome back to the Little Brown Jug Show. I'm your host, Mikey Pedroza, and this is a show where I talk about the swing culture and fun stuff and anything else I want to talk about that might be fun but not, maybe not fun at the same time. I'm going to send a special shout out to Kyle and Alexis, the Cleveland Junior Jitterbugs. Thank you for that awesome intro. And if you don't know who they are, check out their fantastic routine at this past year's ILHC in the description down below. I want to say thank you to everybody who watched my last video where I did a new segment called Where Was I Then? Where I sat down and watched myself dance in 1999. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the link is down below. Check it out. All this looks about the same except less hair and maybe a little bit less in this area too. Oh, and yes, there will be more videos coming out soon of me, VHS. If you don't know what that is, I'm old. <laughs> So after my last episode, I feel like I want to share more clips with you. So that brings me to the topic of this episode, Clip Show. I've compiled a few of my favorite inspirational, just awesome clips, and I'm going to present them to you, and I'm going to give you my little commentary on it. Also, maybe some behind-the-scenes stuff from the dancers themselves. So some of it's going to be swing, and some of it's not. And just deal with it, because you're watching already, and it's going to happen. So here we go into the first clip. The Mighty Zulu Kings with Fresh Socks 22. At first glance, you can tell this video is shot in the 1920s motif. Of course, nothing is ever accurate, so I don't really care about that. But what I really care about is the action and the dancing in this film. Obviously, there's some kind of story plot line with the music being so sweet about lovers and falling apart. Of course, all that storyline is there, which is great. But what I really love is what these dancers are doing with break dancing. Nothing crazy out of this world, but smooth, clean dancing. I think too often a lot of us think of b-boy dancing as more of just power moves, like windmills and backflips and all this sorts of stuff. But I have a feeling when these dancers were dancing on camera, I feel like they were actually dancing to this song. It's got that classic feel and sound to it. Nice crisp guitar and the vocals are sweet and sincere and I feel like the dancing really captures that, that it's genuine and they're not trying to be anything other than who they are. You could take who they are and put it in a different time or era and they'll still be them. The Mighty Zulu Kings was established in 1973 and they were a part of the Zulu Nation which was co-founded by African Bambata. And if you don't know who African Bambata is, listen to this. So the group has been around for a really long time, and they're in what they call their fourth generation. The Mighty Zulu Kings continue to create, improve, innovate, and educate people on the hip-hop culture, making sure it stays alive for future generations. Got some Carolina Shag for y'all with Brenner Gorey and Nikki Contulis. Now if you've seen Carolina Shag or even heard of it, then you know it's one hell of a smooth dance. The first time I ever heard about it, it was explained to me like this. You have to be able to dance and move with your partner while holding a drink in your hand and not spilling a drop. Now when I watch these guys dance, they are definitely taking that consideration, but also breaking or blurring those lines. Because you could tell they're going for it. They're moving their bodies all over the place. Now from what I understand, Brenner is kind of the new school version of the dance that's been around since the 1940s really. It's dance to music what I would describe as old school rhythm and blues from the late 40s and 50s. But I've also heard it described as beach music, mainly because the dance grew up between the shores of Myrtle Beach in South Carolina and Wilmington in North Carolina. The first thing you might notice is that it may look like a peacock dance, and it kind of is. You'll see the leaders just going for it, going really, really low, asking their partners to hold their weight, or maybe just taking all the time in the world for their spins. But watch it again, and watch the follows this time. I love this video because I can see Nikki doing all sorts of things, like filling in those spaces, complimenting her partner and the music at the same time. You'll also see where they have some choreographed moves, where there's some pretty awesome stuff. I haven't watched a ton of shag dancing clips, but the ones I have seen, those choreographed sections are treasures. Also, you may notice there's a lot of the similarities between shag dance and Lindy Hop, except that the execution in shag dance is done in a totally different way. 
And those things, to me, are the distinctions between the two dances. That doesn't mean one is good or one is bad. What that means is just you can actually see the differences between them, but also see the similarities so you can make a connection in your head. This is the way I tend to look at different dance styles. I always relate them to what I know best, Lindy Hop. So you can check out more information in the description below about Shag Dance and take that trip down that Shag Dance rabbit hole and find out all this amazing music and all this amazing dancing that is just there and also related to our swing culture. The Choreo Cookies at Body Rock 2014 with The Silent Cookie. So right from the start, you might recognize that song as Jubilee Stomp from Duke Ellington. I love watching this team perform. They are untouchable. And the only word I can use to describe them is precision. From the movement of their arms to the placement exactly where they need to be on stage. That is some serious practice time and all the work and the love they put into the dance is shown every time I see them perform. And then they go on to use that piano theme from that part in that movie Up that we all fast forward if we're wanting to feel good. Another thing I love about this group is that they constantly have a theme for every routine. It's not just, hey, here's a song, let's dance to it. It's, here's a song which invokes this feeling and then invokes this imagery and then the dance comes alive using all three of those things. But even better, they don't just throw it in your face like, hey, this is what we're trying to do. Do you, do you see it? Do you read it? Do you read it? We're being silent. The dance is the primary focus, but underneath it all, they always have this idea of the theme of what's going on. And then they bring it on back home with Hey Pachuco from the Royal Crown Review. And the thing that I hate is that they're using our music and just killing it. Totally re-envisioning the idea of how we dance to it and taking it to a whole different level. So if I'm ever feeling like I need a performance, pick me up and I need to see what like I'm trying to go for with a performance, I watch something like this, where it inspires me, yet it challenges me to be better. Also, if you watch really closely, or if you already know, the leaders of this group is the famous hip-hop couple, Keone and Marie Madrid. That's a whole nother rabbit hole to fall down. I'll leave a link down below where you can see one of their most famous ones, and then I'll let you keep going down and finding more videos. Lindy Hopper's Dozen with Get The Mop at Lindy Focus. I absolutely love this routine. It's all about the precision of the individual dancers. Also, it's at a mid-tempo range and there's no area. The routine is a great contrast to teams we see like the Swingin' Air Force or the Fly Rides. Also, I feel this team routine really uses a lot of those ideas I was just talking about in hip hop team routines, where the transitions just mesh to something and then all of a sudden, boom, they're made into a shape. Whether they go into a triangle, a circle, or moving out of that circle, diagonal lines, Everything's a little bit blurry and hazy until they actually make that shape. I like that. I like that they keep the audience guessing like, whoa, how did, how did they actually get into that? I didn't even notice. I really like that a lot. Make the audience work at watching what you're doing. Not only that, every single one of those couples is doing something slightly different. I mean, this is definitely showcased at the beginning and the end where each couple is doing a different jazz move. I asked Laura and Brooks to give me a little insight into what went on with the creation of this routine. They said they were trying to execute what they admired of the jazz musicians in that song. They also said the inspiration for the choreography came from the song itself, listening to it and making it fit together seamlessly and get them off was the kind of energy they were looking for in a team routine. I encourage you to watch this one couple at a time and you'll see the differences and you'll see how they work really well with everybody else. So to Lindy Hopper's Dozen in Austin, this is an awesome routine. Everybody else out there, you should watch it over and over again because I think it's exemplary performance of what Lindy Hop is today. <laughs> the pure joy of Remy and Ramona dancing at the authentic jazz weekend in Korea. As soon as I saw this clip posted, I knew I had to see it right away. And I was absolutely blown away by the energy, joy, and excitement in this routine. It's something I look for 
in all my dancing, but when I see it in others, it just makes me want to jump in and join them. I don't even know what the hell they're going to do next in the routine, but all I want to do is join them. <laughs> Remy and Ramona both said they just went with the feeling to Naomi and her handsome devil's version of I Know How To Do It. I love how this song has a ton of call and response, and Remy and Ramona capitalize on a lot of that in the routine. They have a lot of very simple Lindy Hop movements using the whole floor. They're also fantastic, accomplished solo jazz dancers. This was a great time for them to showcase exactly what they could do. They told me it took them about two hours to come up with the routine, and that everything flowed out of them easily, mostly due for the respect they had for each other. But they laughed and they felt their way through the entire process of making this fantastic routine. The idea they wanted to put out there was this is how much they love to perform, and I think they accomplished that really well. Sometimes I have a bit of a problem when boogie woogie dancers come to Lindy Hop and they use a lot of the boogie style things looking into the audience and trying to get approval like that. Yes, there are times when that's really cool and really nice, but other times I'd rather see the how much joy and connection you are having with your partner. And when I mean connection, I don't mean tension and all these bullshit words. I mean the connection that you have with your partner, that thing you cannot be taught that is just magic and it happens throughout the dance and we've all felt it at one point or another. I cannot tell you how much I love this routine. Everything about it is right up my alley of what I feel what a Lindy Hop routine should have. The winners of the Team Short Showcase, why? No, seriously, that's the name of the team, why? Or as they say it, ah, ja, sir. I probably said that wrong. The first thing I notice, of course, they're wearing masks. If you've ever been in a dance team before, you know probably one of the biggest fights you will get in, because you will get into a fight, is what do you wear? And I feel this was easily taken out of the, the equation. You're gonna wear something dark, and then put on this mask, done. This routine has so many amazing elements. First with the song they used, Coco by Duke Ellington, a song in the minor key. If you don't know minor and major, just think of minor being like those sad, weird, creepy songs and major being those really happy, go-lucky songs. The leader of the group, Andy Sayo, was thinking the same thing. He loves Lindy Hop being happy and joyful, but when he heard this song, he loved that it was dark and heavy and it made him imagine these kind of animalistic movements. I like how they capitalized on parts of the song where it was just a really simple instrument solo, where the whole team would stay still, except for maybe a few dancers moving around each other. Because the way they're moving is very creepy. It's slower than normal, and you can't tell who's who. It creates a sense of insecurity and makes me want to watch more and more. Kind of the same ideas as I watch a scary movie. I don't want to watch, but I have to see what happens. As opposed to just going, let me jam Lindy Hop into this or a fall off the log feeling into this and see if it fits. It's like fitting the star peg into the round hole. It's just not going to fit. But the way they moved to it and the way they interpreted it, I think fits better than anything else could have. So good job to you, Andy Seo, and your team. Why? Because we like you. <laughs> so now we're on to the question of the day. What parts of these clips did you like the most? What parts did you not like? Tell me in the comments down below. I'm gonna read them, I'll reply to them. I'm always watching and I always want to hear your opinions on the things I see. So that's it, that brings an end to another show of the Little Brown Jug Show. Remember, if you like the video, please hit that button. And if you wanna get all my videos and updates, please hit that subscribe button. And you can always see what I'm up to on the Facebook page or follow me on Twitter. And you can always catch me on MikeyPedroza.com. So please hit those links down below, watch all these clips. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Ramona Staffeld and Remy Kwakukwame. 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 Seriously, Remy, become a DJ. You don't need a DJ name. You just need that last name. DJ Kwakukwame. <laughs> Remy Guacamole.